Well, I know what you're thinking. You're saying June Allison has certainly put on weight. Well, don't adjust your set. I'm not June Allison, and I've been the same size ever since I was born. I don't know about you, but I'm always losing something. Seems that I'm forever looking for my... Oh, <laughs> there it is. I suppose most of us are looking for something. For some, it's a new way of life, and for others, money, romance, new job, money. Or even a way to shake the flu. Right, June? Of course, some people search for the more poetic things, like the uh, bluebird of happiness, fountain of youth, end of the rainbow. Our story this week is about a search for the most elusive of all things, the blue goose. Our star, Mr. Joseph Cotton. Good evening, Mr. Burlingame. Very good evening to the you. The whole building's lit up. Everybody working late tonight? Everybody but me. No, I'm staying in town. Wife's coming in. Wife, huh? With an orchid and that gleam in your eye? All right. I've got a date. I should late. In that case, I'll scram. I just dropped in for a quick one. I gotta get back to the office and get those infernal reports in. Judy's doing mine. Lucky stiff. Secretary like Judy and a date with an unknown lovely. Sorry, everything went wrong, just er My, this is a day. You bet it's a day. Most men would be furious rushing from the office no and having office to wait. Talk. But it really just wasn't my rules. fault. First time I get a no token, and then... But talk. Housekeeping. Orchids. Are for unmatted ladies. Green orchid. Oh, darling, I feel possibly wicked. That's exactly the way you're supposed to feel. See Mr. Burlingame? Mind if we walk? Must we? I haven't walked for the beautiful girl on my arm in a long time. I think we'll be very late tonight. Who cares? Maybe we won't go home at all. We must. You know we can't leave Tommy alone with a new babysitter. Tommy? Who's Tommy? Now, don't be silly. Madam, I make it a point never to date married women with children. I demand undivided attention. Come. Champagne and candlelight. Await us below. For the next ten years. And the ten after that. Champagne. What is it? Dynamite. <laughs> Vodka brandy. The lemon. We'll have another while they get our order. Two of these on an empty stomach, and I'll be dancing on the table. Maybe I'll join you. <laughs> we used to make a rather handsome couple. Remember those rumble lessons? I think this is more our speed now. Let's give it a whirl. No, we can't. Not all by ourselves. They'll think we're crazy. Good. How many people at our age are crazy? I think we're doing rather nicely. I'm glad you wore that dress. Bare shoulders go with waltzes. The skirt doesn't. It's going to rip any minute. That'll be interesting. Would you like to stay overnight in the big city? I'd love to sometime, darling. Why not tonight? It's Tommy. 
He was upset when I left. He always is when you leave. No, he really wasn't feeling well. I'm sorry. It's on my mind. I don't want anything on your mind tonight but me. Carol, that's important. We're going to make an 840 cut and we better eat. I know it's against the rules, but would you mind very much if I call the house to see if Tommy's all right? Well, please make it brief. He's probably fast asleep. What'll I order for you? Anything you decide on. You're being so masterful tonight. Captain. Well, he wasn't asleep, but the sitter thought he might have a fever, so I asked her to take his temperature. Well, that goes our evening. What about Tommy? Don't you care about him? Well, has he or hasn't he got a temperature? No, but the back of his neck is hot. So is mine. I don't think that's very funny. I don't think Tommy is sick. If you want to know what I think, I think you're making a hypochondriac out of him. We're behaving like two silly children. Over nothing at all. I'm not so sure it's over nothing at all. The question is, are we going to have some life together? The way we used to when we were first married, before we were married. Isn't that rather adolescent? Huh. Your notions get quainter by the minute. Have a favorite, perhaps, we could play for you? No. Oh, thank you. Sure. Well, at least he's happy. Carol. I've been thinking about this night all week. I should have been thinking about something else, those reports I'm supposed to get out. Well, somehow I thought this was more important. I guess I was desperate. Carol, don't you think something's happened to us? Something slipping away without our even noticing it? A kind of magic excitement that used to be in everything we did together. It was beautiful, but... Well, you can't go on like that forever. Why? Why does it have to change? People change it. We used to keep a piece of the day for each other. The cocktail hour would fence it off. Now, that's gone. Tommy's at your elbow, the phone rings, something's boiling over on the stove. Life just seems to whittle away at you, whittle away. Tell you it's rather frightening. I've spoiled the evening for you, haven't I? Oh, it wasn't your fault. I'm sorry. I just can't forget Tommy's sick. You mean you want to call off the rest of the evening? Well, I had to do some tall finagling to get those. Oh, dear. Mary Martin. Well, it isn't the last show in the world. I can't let you miss that. Well, it's not the kind of show you want to see by yourself. If you leave now, you can catch the 821. What will you do? Well, I'll go to the office and work on those reports. Will you be late? Well, if I am, I can stay in town. It's a shame to waste those tickets. Oh, well. Dick, I promise to do better next time. Forget it. It's nobody's fault. Well...
Miss Ruggles, please. Judy, Mr. Burlingame. I'm not going to be busy tonight, so I'll be over to the office in a few minutes and help you with those reports. You have? Well, you're speed taping. Oh, Judy. I've got a couple of seats tonight for the Mary Martin show. Have you seen it? Well, shame to waste them. What do you say? Fine. You run home, change, and I'll meet you at the theater. Enough, Mr. Brillingame. You know, I thought at first you were joking when you phoned me. Why? Well, things like this don't usually drop out of the sky. You saved my evening. I had no idea you lived down here. These your paintings? Oh, well, some of them. I don't really paint, I just doodle. Want to look over the report while I put the kettle on? Well, not really. I'd much rather look at your doodlings. If the men stayed away from the office and the secretaries took over their jobs, all the work would get done and nobody would be the wiser. There aren't many men who'd make that statement. You know, you've even imitated my inimitable literary style. Oh, well, that's no trick after taking down his shorthand for six months. May as well sign them and get it over with. If you can tell character by handwriting, something's just happened to yours. Maybe it has. I take it that wasn't an accident. I've had a nice evening. I like you. I just felt like touching your hand. Well, that's an entirely new angle, Mr. Bellingham. You call Ed Millman, Ed. You even call Howard Myers Howdy. I get stuck with Mr. Burlingame. On the seventh floor, if the man earns over 12,000, the girls all call him Mr. Don't ask me why. Well, couldn't you make an exception in my case? I could try, Dick. Sounds right. I think it's your voice. I like your voice. Tonight you seem to like everything about me. I have from the very beginning. I'm going to need your help. One of those chic young men at the office gave me some uh, Shannon coffee glasses for Christmas, and I've been looking for an excuse to use them. I'm afraid I don't know any more about Shannon coffee than you do. Here, you can read the recipe. Mm. Well, whiskey, granulated sugar, four or five ounces. Of... You know, frankly, I didn't think you were ever aware of me as anything except a secretary. You're wrong. I always thought of you as a very attractive girl. But you were married. And this uh, dinner date that you gave up for the night, uh, is that something special? Well, I'd like to be. Is he a nice guy? Yes. What's he do? Oh, he's a medical student at Columbia. He's uh, serious, and you're not? Is that it? Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure about anything. I'm not even sure if I'd like to get married. Well, that's beautiful. All right. Uh, do you like all my furnishings? I picked up most of them at the flea market down the street. I never saw so many conversation pieces in my life. We could talk all night. 
Careful, that's hot. And I'm told one has to watch out for them. They creep up on you. Mm. I think you have the makings of a pretty good wife. Why don't you want to get married? Maybe I've seen too many married men and women. And you think marriage doesn't work? Oh, no, it's probably as good an arrangement as any other for two people to live together and raise children. But the two people have to believe in something or else it just becomes a cage with both of them looking for a trap door. What should they believe in? Oh, I don't know. Something they feel a part of. Something with enough meaning to make the daily routine worthwhile. Suppose they believe in each other. Isn't that enough? Is it for you? No. At least not after a few years. You can't help being honest, can you? That's what makes you different from the others. What's the answer, then? Or should I say, uh, is there an answer? For some men, it's their work, I suppose. Getting ahead to the tenth floor where the bigwigs are. Having their ulcers on a higher level. Maybe when they're 50, owning two cars instead of one. Is that what you want? <laughs> now, Judy, don't be cynical. Well, I can't help seeing things as I see them. But I'm spoiling our evening. I'll stop. Oh, no, this seems to be my night for taking stock. Don't spare me any of the facts of life. Seventh floor is a great place to collect them. When I first came there, I thought everybody was very gay and amusing. And little by little, the cracks began to show in the shiny surface. Did you ever stop to think why we're there? The girls, I mean. Because you're a bunch of good secretaries. Oh, there are others just as good, but a pretty face helps. <laughs> you make it sound like some kind of a harem. Too melodramatic a word. Mostly it's just flirtations. But your friends need them just as they need those double dry martinis every day when they leave the office before they go home. Keeps them from jumping out of windows. Am I one of them? Is that the way you look at me? No. I've always thought of you as an exception. Until tonight. Oh, no. Tonight you've told me something that I've always felt about you. You and me, we're not so different. We're both looking for something. And we'll never be satisfied until we find it. I know what I want to find. But you, you're like my father. A very special kind of man. You're not quite sure, but still you have to keep on looking. I understood him, but Mama couldn't. He was restless and fiddle-footed. He'd go away and leave us sometimes for months. He loved us. It wasn't enough. I wouldn't do that. You can't think I'd leave someone I loved. Oh, no. I think you're luckier than my father was. But you don't realize it yet. When I was a little girl, he used to tell me there was a, a bird all men searched for. The eternal quest, he called it. Some men made it in the air, others below the sea, and some within themselves. He called it the Blue Goose. Of course. That's a fairy tale. The blue bird of happiness. No, he meant something different. Something deeper than that. Love. Complete and yet not finished. Not ever finished. You think you ever found it? No, but he never stopped looking, and he taught me to look. I remember once he brought me a little blue feather. A native found it in Labrador, he said, and gave it to him. It was the bluest blue. Why'd you say, uh, I'm luckier than he was? I know how you felt about tonight. Do you think that most men would care that much and go to so much trouble after ten years? Even if you lost it now, you'd be lucky, and so would your wife. For her, there's no one else, and there never will be. I don't know about me, but I do know the kind of woman she is. I wish I didn't. It's very lonely looking for the blue goose by yourself. 
I've been wondering about that bird. You really reached way out for him, didn't you? I've been trying to paint it for years. I've never been able to mix the right blue. You will. You shouldn't settle for anything less than what you're looking for. None of us should. I'll see you in the morning. Judy. I think you ought to telephone that serious medical student. It really isn't very late. Here. Carol's everything all right? Oh, yes. It was nothing. Come sit down. I'll fix you a drink. I don't want a drink. I want to look at you. You haven't worn that robe in a long time. Always let your hair this way. Oh, darling. I was so afraid. So afraid I'd lost you. And all the way home, I kept wishing I could go back and start all over again. You were looking for something. And I didn't help you. Yes, I was looking for something, Carol. I must keep on looking for it. I... I don't know how to put it into words, but I mean... If you find the blue goose, you ought not take it for granted. The blue goose? I'll tell you about him someday. How's Tommy? Tommy? Who's Tommy?